one point, there was even a rumor. A third plane was heading in. You got to remember, at that moment, anything seemed possible. Other than NYPD, Port Authority, police, and the military. And I need that done now. On top of everything else, just talking to the guys in the stairwell was tough. The tower's internal communication setup had been knocked out by the crash. That left fire department radio. Suddenly, you have hundreds and hundreds of firefighters that have radio. Seems to become more and more difficult. who was trying frantically to reach anyone on the elevator. 59 car, anyone in this car? Oh, is there anyone in this car? And going through the list. Hello, is there anyone in this car? And there's about 98 elevators in the World Trade Center. 70, 70 on the main line. The only kind of recall people is people in the middle of all this, suddenly, an elevator opens up. And you see people, not having a clue of what's going on. Because they've been stuck in there since the first plane hit. I was seeing the look on the firefighters. It was not fear, it was what's going on. Disbelief. That made me panic a little bit. That made me panic. It was the first time I had seen Father Judge, the chaplain, as he's called. He was in the lobby with us, and he, I could tell that he was praying. You know, Father Judd, he, he would at least make eye contact with you and kind of give you a reassuring look. That wasn't occurring, almost like he knew that this was not good. at the firehouse, off-duty guys were starting to show up. You know, we're just waiting right now. What's that? We're just waiting right now. Tony was, uh, he just had one thing in his mind. This is bad. To go there, and he couldn't. Two, 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 right away. And, and that's when Chief Burns arrived. I need a cup of coffee. Larry Burns joined the fire department in 1957, retired a battalion chief three years ago. I couldn't wait. I had to get down there. Because you know what? They're my firefighters. It's my building. It's my city. We do gear all together. Get a flashlight and a bottle of water. Okay. Told the probie, get your gear, let's go. I remember Tony asking me to bring him some gloves, medical grab gloves. A box of gloves. Go grab a box of gloves. And by the time I found them and rushed back, they were gone. Proby and the retired chief were lost in the crowd, headed down to the Trade Center. 
I think at that point, the lobby was pretty empty. There were just a few of us in the lobby, and, and we were discussing tactics. This is Tower One. This is Tower One. Put a big one here. Some of the outlying companies didn't know what Tower One was and Tower Two. So we were just trying to help them out by writing it on the desk to make it obvious to, to people. It was just before 10 o'clock. A little over an hour since the first plane hit. Firefighters from all over the city were inside those towers. Hundreds of them. I remember I'm filming T. Pfeiffer. And he's on the radio. situation that uh, started bad just gets worse and worse and worse. The World Trade Center, South Tower, which was hit by a plane and racked by an explosion approximately an hour ago, has totally collapsed. What happened? If you're just joining us this morning, uh, here for a, a horrific surprise. right out of one of the movies you would see in Hollywood. People walking around with uh, cell phones in tears, uh, holding their heads, looking up at what's left of the World Trade Center and just shaking their heads in disbelief. Out on the street, everyone knew what just happened. The South Tower was gone. They saw it collapse and ran. Time slowed down and everything became pitch black. Everybody all right? Yeah, I'm okay. How's the way out of here? And then realize, okay, um, I'm not dead. Oh. Yeah, right here. So let's uh, turn on my uh, floodlight on top of my camera. All right, come on down this way. Oh. Yeah, let's get out the way we came in. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on back. Everybody down. Inside the Trade Center, yeah. all Jules and Chief Pfeiffer knew. Well, yeah, right here. All anyone knew was that something had gone terribly wrong. No, right. They asked me, you with the light, help us out. We gotta get everybody out! Pointing my light wherever they needed. I remember seeing Chief Pfeiffer. Man post from Tower One. To all units. Here. Evacuate the building. Man post to all units. <laughs> He gave it right away, very calm, didn't wait. And it was for him, it was a precaution. It was okay, something wrong is happening. Let's get everybody out. Where's that flashlight? From the tone of his voice, I knew that it was no normal thing. I knew it was time to leave. I remember saying to the guys, well, it's, uh, we're on our own now. And for the first time, I looked in someone else's eyes and saw fear. Whew, which you don't see with the firemen. We orderly evacuated. Well, it was such a long walk, 21, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. I was going down the stairs. I can remember firemen resting on the landing. 